Let us observe once again the growth patterns of these infestations. We return to a Zerg versus Zerg best of five finals from the Casper Sky Arena. We are in game number three in a tied up series between your Polish Zerg and the top side of Polar Knight. Acer's Nurcio. His opponent showing some really stellar micro, but uh, even more stellar macro, especially in game number two. The German Zerg, Liquid's TLO. And may the finals continue to bring us some pretty sweet play. Nurcio switching things up the first two games. He went for a very early pool pressure, whereas TLO went for a uh, 15 hatch. Actually, game number two went for a 14 pool, then a 15 hatch, and then canceled that 15 hatch, and then went on to win the game. Mutalisks. This time they're both gonna stick to the drones for a while longer. I expect to see 15 and then one yank out to the side. Looks like TLO's thinking about it. The 15th just came out. Let's wait until the, just the right time and it will be a spawning pool. Same with Nurcio. So far the production tab shows an identical mirror. First Overlord passes the second. North side of the map and the south. Gas for TLO. Base for Nurcio. The first divergence is observed. Well, students, provide to me a hypothesis of why this organism would choose this divergence. The answer is simple, Professor. Macro! Oh, Nurcio is going to provide his own hypothesis. He wanted to do a triple eight pool but it looks like you wouldn't fall for that. <laughs> Nurgio, wow, you evil bugger. Tilo's just gonna laugh at that. Uh, Tilo's gas coming in earlier than Nurgio's, but Nurgio's uh, hatchery coming in earlier than Tilo's. All these timings are very, very close. I'm not overthinking things as much anymore that I think if he does it once, he won't do it again. Yeah, right, he may just do it again. <laughs> So this game looks to be, from the early game, the most even of the three so far. These timings differ by seconds, and honestly the biggest difference is going to come out in the Zergling speed, which has just started for uh, TLO, and which will start in just a moment for Nurcio, unless he goes for a fast Larry, selecting the hatchery lot. Nope, there's the Zergling speed. Uh, so we're going to have, what is this, about a, a 25 second difference between the Zergling speed for the two. And that's going to be the biggest thing. That is really even, really close as compared to what we saw in the first two games. The first two games was all macro TLO, all pressure Nurcio. And now they're uh, nuts and nuts, if I may say so. TLO uh, getting a little bit of harassed by these Zerglings. Looks like they're just going to get in and see. TLO does not like that he gave up the scout of the extractor. Gosu Micro, you mean. <laughs> Nurcio. Happy about getting that Ling in. MVP Ling is going to spot the gas timing. Nurcio is going to get a Baneling Nest. Now, he's getting a Baneling Nest sooner than TLO, uh, but he's getting a Baneling Nest that's not going to time up with any Zer Zergling production of his own. He's going to have to uh, use some small numbers to try to defend here. And he is just getting a few Zerglings out. Let's hope it's enough. TLO's speed is finished. Man, this is great timing for TLO. He's going to choose to pick off the spine crawler. He does. Nurcio's forced to use drones. The queens are providing a lot of firepower here. I think one drone was lost. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe there's another another drone or two from there. But Nurcio spent more time building drones. No, he didn't. Uh, somehow TLO has 30 drones. What the hell is going on here? TLO, how? How in the Sam hell do you have this advantage that you have? I guess there are seven drones in the cooker now for Nurcio, and he's got a little bit of a Ling advantage. But God, TLO, 
he's got a nice advantage here still. Even five drones now, he's got to switch and build some Zerglings. Uh, but he will do, and, and he's got two spine crawlers coming up. I guess he used a couple drones. I don't really think Nurchio can pressure this. And at the end of the day, I guess the drone count's going to come out to be quite a bit more even. Uh, I say that, of course, as TLO picks up a couple buildings that Nurchio doesn't have. The four gas, again, looks like Mutas to me. I would expect to see very soon. As a matter of fact, he's got the... Okay, there it is. I just now looked at it and didn't notice it. The lair. Uh, for some reason, I was thinking it hadn't gone down yet. It, it has. It's halfway done, even. Yeah, this is definitely going to be another Muta timing from TLO. But to make that work, he's going to have to survive the Zerglings of Nurchio. Nurchio does have his own speed finish now. And uh, he's got the Baneling Nest, which TLO lacks. TLO knows it. There's a lot of Zerglings coming across the map. He's going to build an Evolution Chamber wall. He's getting an additional Spine Crawler. Is there a hole up to the top of that? I'm not sure. It doesn't look like it. Nurchio's going to focus on the middle Evolution Chamber. And these Spine Crawlers don't have the damage they need against these Zerglings. Maybe they do, Nurchio. Oh, TLO with the counterattack. Clutch. It's going to soak a little bit of Nurchio's attention at just the right time and make Nurchio pull back. Before he loses his mind, uh, the Baneling number, though, it's too much. I don't I don't think TLO can hold this. It's not going to take very many Banelings to bust that Evolution Chamber. Nurchio's going to go for it. He almost kills the second Evolution Chamber while he's at it. Now we've got Banelings going off on Zerglings. TLO doesn't even have as many Zerglings as Nurchio. So Nurchio's going to get in here with some massive damage. There are two Banelings. One needs to die before they get to the drones. It looks like it doesn't happen. We do have losses on all fronts here for... TLO, and Zerglings are continuing to stream. TLO might have a wall off, but the Queen's going down. He is just getting the advantage in his base with the Zergling numbers, and having three spine crawlers, maybe TLO can stabilize. He's instantly going to counterattack. He feels like he lost a lot of drones there, and he's right. Nurchio up at 40, TLO down at 30. Drone count has been turned on its head time and time again. TLO, he's not even going to wait for any Banelings. He feels like he needs to get in now, and he might be right. If he can pick off a decent number of drones while building some behind it, he could do good things here. Nurchio's not committing all the way to Zerglings either. He's building a few Zerglings, a few drones. TLO's Spire did just finish, if I'm not mistaken. We'll watch the production queue for Mutalisk possibilities. Uh, but we'll also check back over into this worker count. TLO is still behind. It's a dangerous spot. The Spire is there. No Mutas. Ah, okay, here they are. Five. Five Mutas coming through to begin with. That is about all the gas TLO had saved up. This could still be a really nasty timing. However, Nurchio's got the advantage. He has a worker advantage, and he's maintaining it. He's building more workers. He's getting an evolution chamber as well as an infestation pit. It's interesting that he's choosing to go straight to infestors. This looks like it's going to be a Zergling Infestor style. Of course, we know that Infestors can deal pretty well with uh, Mutalisks, but it takes some finesse, especially with the projectile speed of Fungal Growth now. You've got to uh, forecast the Muta movement a little bit. you got to shoot in front of them to some degree. There's a lot of Zerglings here for Nurchio, but there are Mutas here for TLO. So TLO Zerglings can't really fight Nurchios, but uh, TLO's Mutas could slowly pick off. And it looks like the Zerglings are just going to counterattack. That may force TLO to bring his Mutalisks home. He can't really... Uh, I guess he's got the wall. He might be able to just leave the Mutalisks over there. I think he really needs to be doing damage with these Mutalisks right now. The drone count has gotten a lot closer. Nurchio still uh, has a little bit of an advantage. TLO with the Clutch Queen positioning. He does need his uh, Mutalisks though because the Queen was on such low health. And he just can't afford another one. He's so low economy or has been, just behind Nurchio enough so that he's really nervous. Nurchio now with the mass spine crawler, he's got three at the natural, he's got uh, two in the main, and it looks like uh, infestors are the order of the day. He's going to get the pathogen glands for him right now, and if he can f bait TLO into making a mistake and thinking he could take out, uh, say, maybe one of these two spore crawlers in the main, he might be able to get a nice fungal off. The Infestors are just finishing. They have the Pathogen Glands. They'll have a Fungal the second they pop out of these eggs. TLO needs to be really careful. There are eight Infestors. By all means, this is enough to smash these Mutas. Oh, if one Fungal lands. Nurchio's trying, but he's getting nothing. Really? He just used two Fungals. Not a single Mutalisk was caught. 
He's got so many infestors though, and TLO might be emboldened by this, seeing two fungals miss. He might think that Nurchio doesn't have enough infestors to make the kill happen. Once a fungal does land, I believe it takes four, maybe five whole fungals. But there are so many infestors. A uh, fungal does land again, it's, it's not getting anything. Nurchio's not landing the fungals he needs to. Tilo still has a lot of mutalisks here. It's up to 14. If he keeps those spread out, then uh, the eight infestors are quite a bit less intimidating. Until Nurchio gets uh, the queen count up that can do good damage the whole time the mutas are fungled. Then he'll be able to start really picking them off quick. Tilo uh, all over the place with his mutas. He's got a, just a couple in different various places. He's picking off some creep tumors at the front with just a couple. He's defending this uh, zergling, this roaming zergling pack with just a couple. And was even killing an overlord with just a couple. Nurchio though, uh, TLO doesn't have detection. Nurchio's going to abuse the hell out of this. TLO can't quite catch the little bit of moving terrain. Nurchio's got a lot of infestors over here. God, it's so tough to see. Nurchio's gonna come right into the natural. Infested Terrans could do so much damage here. Oh, with them in place, the Mutas can't fight this. The Mutas can't do anything to this many Infested Terrans. That base is for sure sacrificed. He's gonna get the tech here. He's gonna get the Roach Warren. He might get it before the Roach Speed is done. He might even get both of these Evolution Chambers. Nope, he's not gonna focus. If he was controlling these, uh, he doesn't really need to pick off the gases. They're quick and easy to replace anyway. It looks like Roach Speed does finish, and all the Infested Terrans are going to uh, expire. Tilo did retain his Mute account, and he's starting to get a lot of Roaches up, but that was a big hit. And you know I say that, Tilo salvaged quite a few drones and has a third up. Nurchio doesn't. The drone count is still heavily in Nurchio's favor, so on two bases as they both are, Nurchio has the better mining. He's also got a decent queen number, he's got spore crawlers moving out, and he has retained all of these infestors. The mutilus count is honestly not that intimidating considering 15 infestors, 18 mutas, he almost has an infestor per muta. And uh, he definitely doesn't need that, he, if he gets the right fungals he only really needs like 5 if he catches the whole pack clumped. Nur uh, Nurchio is not going to get that lucky though, TLO is going to be very careful with his mutalisks, as a matter of fact keeping just one up there, definitely not worth fungling from Nurchio. And he's going to keep a lot of the others spread out, it looks like he's going to make a blockade, is this a mutalisk siege? It kind of looks like it. Meanwhile Nurchio counterattacks with some zerglings, but some zerglings and roaches of Tilo is going to keep it safe. Oh, Tilo needs to be really careful here, uh, Nurchio doesn't know exactly what he wants to do, oh Tilo don't clump, oh no! If some, uh, oh, here we go, some infested Terrans are down. Nurchio's gonna get a fungal off. Oh, another beautiful fungal! TLO, you've been caught! The trap has sprung, the fungals are down. With these queens, with these infested Terrans, it doesn't take nearly all the energy, and the mutalisks are cleaned up deftly. TLO just lost so much. We go to the units lost, it's, it was super efficient before then. I didn't check it, but I'm sure that that was the case. And now, uh, Nurchio has just swung into a gigantic lead. He's retained all of these infestors. Tilo's gonna try to use roaches against infestors. That's not gonna be fun. As a matter of fact, Nurchio's now fielding his own roaches. Just to make that even less fun for Tilo. Tilo does have an armor upgrade advantage, and he's a little bit ahead in the other damage, but there's too many fungals. He can't do this. He's caught. He's getting caught again. He's got a fight, but he knows that he can't. Nurchio is steamrolling right through, and a second game goes the way of Nurchio. Tilo in a tight spot. We progress to game number four with Tilo needing two victories in a row to be able to pull this off. Nurchio is going to be very happy beginning game number four. Stay tuned, guys. Game number four should be coming right up. Bye-bye.